everyone, all you football fanatics. This is Turk Talk on footballpros.com. Got to get you a good look at my hat right here. I don't know if everybody caught that the last time. Uh, today what we're going to do is we're going to follow up on our uh, prior session where we talked about man coverage, middle field close, or single high coverage, and we used a, a drive concept, a crossing route uh, against the man, different types of man coverages that we talk, talked about. Uh, and we had some questions by our members, and what I want to do is, is get to those questions, and I'm going to kind of tie two of them uh, together uh, when I talk about some of the things that, that, that you can do uh, with this drive concept. Uh, Scott DCP, uh, he asked, in the one cop or one dog with split or weak side flow by the running backs, does it ever make sense for the tight end to square out rather than cross inside? Uh, Mango. He asked, are the backs just for decoy, or do you use them for quick flare routes if the quarterback can't find anyone open? Good questions. And when you're a coordinator or designing plays, putting things together, uh, you have to understand that there are a lot of different types of coverages that you're going to see. Uh, so as Scott said, he wants to put the backs weak and put the tight end on an out route. Now, against man coverage, that's fine. That works. But you don't always get man coverage and you get zone. And I'm going to show you why. Right here, if both of them are strong and you got zone and you said, okay, we're going to send him out, you still have flare control because you can stretch the defense with the flat route by, by the fullback. And now you can have a hole when he breaks out. Uh, and if they expand from inside all the way, here comes your flare control right here, right where the Sam backer, if he got too deep in a zone, then you can hit that guy right there. So you got your triangle one, two, three against zones, which you try and create uh, against zone defense. Now, if you take the backs and you put them both weak, okay, we'll still put them here. But now what we're going to do is we're going to send them weak. Both backs are weak. Okay, so we don't have, and we're going to put our tight end on an out or a corner out. Now, if they play zone, there's nobody underneath the tight end. So what you've done is basically taken him out of the play against the zone. You have eliminated him. So we don't want to do that. And that's why you don't have weak flow. Plus, with weak flow to the weak side right here, you have spacing issues. What are you going to do with your backs? If you send one back here, well, against the zone, uh, a linebacker can kind of play in between them and take both of those throws away. Uh, and then the back, where does this back go? Because it gets a zone, the shallow cross is going to sit down. As soon as he gets to that ghost tight end area, he has uh, the ability to sit down. Well, the only thing you can do with the back is bring him back under underneath here with that. So I'm going to show you weak doesn't work. Weak flow by the backs doesn't work. But you can use split back flow by the backs. And if we take the full back, and now he's got a protection here, and the half back goes weak, you can still get the flat. And now you've got your sneak route by the halfback, which gets you in that same area as if both backs went to the strong side. So when designing plays, uh, you can come up with a concept and you can change little subtle changes that make the play different, but it sounds the same. Drive. As soon as you say drive, the quarterback pictures it and everybody else can picture the pattern. But now you say, why out? All you're doing is tagging one little guy, one guy, uh, why out or why corner. Now, it changes the play to the defense, but uh, to the offense or to the quarterback, it's still in the drive concept. So that's one way that you can change it. The other way you can change a concept is by using personnel. And drive is normally a three-by-one single back play. Now, let's take a tight end. He becomes the F. Take the fullback out, and we're going to put him out there. And then we're going to put the flanker out here. And this is drive. This is where drive originated. And the seven-man protection with two backs was something that, that you adapted to or adjusted to. If you were having trouble in protection, you can have backs chip or help the lineman uh, with protection. Or if you're getting a lot of one dog or just blitz, you can still pick it up and then have crossing routes with nobody helping underneath. Now, drive right here puts the z over the top on what i call an action post so that's the drive concept with a single back single back drives a three by one you still have the drive concept 
You have a cross route. You have a shallow cross with a possible pick right here. Your ex still runs his comeback, 15-yard comeback. Again, you could put him on anything you want as well. Okay? But that's the drive. Now, what you do with your back, this is sending the back away. And when you send him away, now you want to bring him back underneath on a sneak to that area. And you're actually getting a double pick right here. So Y is coming up. He's trying to pick for the F in man coverage. And then the back uses F as a, as a pick as well coming back underneath. So you see all those crossing routes. It's a lot for the defense to have to get through, a lot of bodies to get through. So you can send the, the tight end or you can call a route to the tight end and send him out in the two-back scheme. Uh, with split flow, but not weak flow or strong throw. Now, if you wanted to send the Y out right here, uh, you'd have to say, uh, tell Z something else, because you don't want him running a post and him going, you could run it to a corner if he was, but he's got to know he's getting out of the way. So you might want to just put him on a go route out there and make that a route or a concept out of the three by one if you want to put the Y out there. But still, you don't have anything underneath if you want to put the Y out there flare control wise against a zone um, you know so when you put these things together you have to think about zone and man coverages and where your backs are and you always use your backs nobody's a decoy in my book uh, because you never know if quick pressure quarterback's got to move one way or another you might become the primary receiver based on his movement and if you're dogging it or not getting to where you're supposed to be quickly uh, you're hurting the quarterback and your chances of, uh, of a success, successful play. Now, uh, you can also take a receiver. Now you got three wide receivers, and you put your third wide receiver outside. And he's running the post because he's got speed, and now you put your flanker inside to run the shallow cross. You can put a any one of the receivers in here, but as long as the receiver is running that action post up top, uh, in case you get a defense that tells the quarterback we got a shot up over the top, you can use those. So formations, uh, personnel, uh, those are different types of ways to run the same concept but make it look completely different to the defense. And then when you put the plays together, you got to make sure that you got um, flare control underneath uh, against the different types of zones uh, that you have. So hopefully that answers your questions. Uh, on this, I think we had one other question. Uh, Pruitt, I believe, asked about the receivers and do they really pay attention to uh, the defensive movement? If you want to be a good receiver, you do. And all the best ones, the best receivers, they know what the defense is doing. It's anticipating what they're going to do. And that's why you use motion, you use formations, uh, try and uh, get a tip on what the defense is doing. If you took a halfback and put them all the way out here in a Linebacker went out and covered him. That tells the quarterback man coverage. If a corner stayed out there to cover him, it's going to tell him zone coverage. Uh, so receivers can use that. See how the defense unfolds on your pre-alignment or motion uh, to understand what they're trying to do, man or zone. That'll help. Wes Welker, Heinz Ward, not the fastest guys in the league, but they are outstanding football players because they understand what they're seeing pre-snap and as the ball is snapped, they understand movement, whether a linebacker is coming forward, indicating man coverage or blitz, or if he's going backwards, that means zone. That's another indicator for receivers to look at uh, man to zone. So uh, hope that answers your questions again. And next time we'll get to uh, our cover two schemes.